Hey there! I wanted to tell you guys right quick because I'm about to run out the door, okay? So, I was asked to pray for someone Thursday and they wanted to come to my house. So, yeah. I'm like, okay, no problem. And so two young, two young ladies, I say young because they all, everybody younger than me at this age. <laughs> so, um, so they came to the house and one, because one woman was just feeling so down and distraught. She, she just looked wounded, like a wounded person. I want to say wounded, like a wounded animal. She was just wounded. Like somebody had just ran over her, backed up, ran over her again, and left her for dead, okay? She looked like she was dying. But you couldn't see any physical wounds on her. So according to her story, she had been going through things for a while, and she was just feeling so down and so depressed and that she felt like, okay, I want to go to church. I want to find a church that's going to lift up my spirits, maybe get some good music, some good singing, and that'll like lift this burden off of me. And um, so she had been going to a church nearby, but I'm like, no, 35 minutes away. And she thought, well, let me just check out this house. Is like This church is like 15 minutes from my house instead of driving the 35 minutes. So she went into the church and she said, it felt off, like it looked like a church, but something was really feeling weird when she went in the door. And, um, but you know, she's so desperate for prayer that she went up to the altar for prayer during the altar call. And while she was standing there in front, a minister passed by her and laid his hands on her. And as soon as he did, her hands clenched up like this. And froze and, and, and became like paralyzed. And he, he said, mm, that's the same thing that happened to me. Oh my goodness. So she left worse than when she came in. So, uh, so by the time she got to me, you know, I listened to her story. I listened to, you know, took some notes and tried to see which way the Holy Spirit was leading me. So there needed to be some reconciliation between the friends. And that was, that was awesome. Um, she had been through a lot of verbal abuse in childhood, just a lot of verbal abuse, even some physical abuse in other relationships. And like, like everywhere she goes, she's abused. Now, usually when I hear something like that, I know somebody has been doing some witchcraft. Um, there are other details I'm just not even going to go into, but it was just, I just, okay. So that was a Thursday. That she came to my house. I'm ready to minister to her. But Tuesday. She. Now she's an hour from my house. On the map it says 45 minutes. But in traffic it's usually for me an hour. She, she was willing to drive to my house. Drive, make an hour's drive. In the evening. To get to me. Um, but the funny thing was. She did that same hour drive. To get to this church. On a Tuesday. This church that I used to go to, used to, used to, they're aware of deliverance, but they don't do that because they might get sued. <laughs> what kind of garbage is that? You know, the same guy that can use you to deliver somebody can keep you from a lawsuit. Hello. Hello. So, um, she had gone to this church crying out to the Lord. Now, thank God. The Lord hears your prayers and he doesn't have to go through the pastor to hear your prayers. Praise the Lord, because we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> we'd be in big trouble. Okay. So, uh, but the Lord heard her prayer and she said she kept hearing my name, Joy. So she knew she was supposed to be at my house. So... I'm just saying it because I'm mad at, at her driving an hour to get to this church and she's still left there the same way. Okay? But thank God she did pray to God. Maybe she just couldn't pray where she was. Um, 
I think the church should be more than, I, I think the church should be a place where you can get delivered. Ugh. All right. The, the weird thing is, though, her friend kept telling me, well, she's not the type that will let anybody pray for her. Oh, really? Well, she clearly demonstrated the opposite. She's always saying, well, I don't let everybody pray for me. You know, you can't let everybody pray for you. You know, you can't let everybody pray for you. If you got to say that, that means you don't really recognize the spirit of the Lord when he's in the atmosphere. And so you just have to operate on paranoia because you really don't know the Holy Ghost. When you get to know God and his character, you'll know when he shows up. But a lot of you all um, are in these catty, abusive relationships like the kind they form when you pledge a sorority um, or you have these frenemies. If you'll tolerate a frenemy, there's no such thing as a frenemy. All right. <laughs> I'm laughing because I recently heard that term come out of somebody's house, mouth that I know very well. Frenemy? What is a frenemy? Okay, I'm, I digress. So anyway, um, I have confronted so many people. I mean, not confronted, but I have ministered to so many people who got more demons through a ministry when they went to go get help. I heard about a woman who uh, she was molested in the ministry more than once. The Lord told them that her coochie needed to be anointed. Really? My God! I'm telling you, if you, you need to pray and you need to wait on the Lord because that devil does not want you to get delivered and he will follow you to the church. If you don't recognize the spirit of the Lord, you'll be thrown off by the stained glass windows and the robe and the collar and the shiny offering plate and the music. So some of y'all, that's church. But the little old lady down the street, you know, who's not very fancy. All you see, you see her in the front yard watering her flowers. She say hi to you on the front porch. That that's the prayer warrior. Okay, you don't even know who the prayer warriors are because you're so used to looking for the building. So you see somebody like me, and you're like, oh, she don't have a lot of followers. <laughs> she can't get no prayer through, you know. Watch some people who got a lot of followers. Woe is you, you know, if men speak highly of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If everybody high five you, you know, yeah, girl. Yeah, you, you're the bomb. Mm. Watch out. If everybody's praising you. I, those people that everybody's praising, that don't mean they can get a prayer through. That don't mean they can get deliver you. Nah. Anyway, you don't want to be in this position anyway. Yeah, I, got, yeah, I walk in power, but... I take a lot of crap. It keeps me humble, I guess. I mean, I'm not asking for it, but anyway. Where do you go when you want to get delivered? You better go on your knees. You better look in the mirror. You better start repenting for the crap that you have done. Yeah, people have done things to you, but you need to repent for the stuff you have done. That's how you get delivered. Okay. Anyway, the end of the story is she sat on my couch and I anointed my hands. I laid hands on both the ladies and start started my deliverance prayer they saw angels they saw demons leaving i i didn't i don't see all that you know i kind of like i don't know i guess i picture things in my mind like i'm creating the pictures in my mind and i'm or the holy ghost is creating the pictures i don't know but it's almost like telling the bedtime story in the mighty name of jesus you go here you go there you go here you do this I bind you, I loose you, you know, all this stuff. Anyway, the lady, she felt snakes in her. She felt something snaking around, making her snake around in her body. I'm like, woo, I've seen that before. Um, and uh, so nothing scares me. So she slumped down. She started drooling. Next thing you know, I ran and got the bucket. I didn't think... I didn't even really get into the my deliverance protocol like I wanted to before she was like laid out on the ground. I'm thinking, wait a minute. 
But wait, I didn't get to that part yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, she got delivered. Before she she came in, she wasn't hungry and everything. She got up. She slowly, she was just exhausted. When when you get relieved of that heavy burden, sometimes you just sleep for days after you get delivered. And uh, she asked for food. I was able to feed her. Um, thank God she liked the food. <laughs> And she drove back home. I haven't heard from her since, but, you know, hopefully I'll, I will. But I'm just mad, you know? 